Hello, I'm Kenny Gott, Certified Financial Planner Consultant and President at PyCheck & Associates in Springfield, Missouri. Welcome to the Ultimate Retirement Checklist. We originally titled this the Ultimate Pre-Retirement Checklist, but the planning ideas we talk about all the time can apply to most stages of the retirement planning process, from younger people just starting their careers, all the way to those of you already well into retirement. And if you are already retired, it's a laundry list of items that you should revisit once in a while to stay on track for a comfortable retirement all the way through. I'll warn you, it's not a very simple checklist. There are a lot of moving parts to planning retirement and to being retired. We can help you with most of it. And the things we don't do ourselves, we can refer you to other professionals who can. But it's your retirement, so some of the heavy lifting can only be done by you. Figuring out what you want retirement to look like for you. Finding ways to create a fulfilling life after you leave the workplace behind. Here are our disclosures. We are both securities and insurance licensed, so we you know, can offer all kinds of investment options. We're not going to talk about specific investments today, just general planning ideas. If you didn't catch our webinar called Prepare Your Spouse to Be a Financially Savvy Survivor, I encourage you to take a look at that. It's on the website. It's about getting organized and sharing the plan as you build it. This way, you both at least have a basic knowledge of what's going on, even if one of you is the primary planner or bookkeeper in the house. This isn't part of the retirement planning checklist because you should already be doing this. So if you're not, take the time to watch that webinar or get the nutshell version in pages 33 to 35 of the book. Uh, the ideas I'm sharing today are based on uh, the final chapter of my book, Bottom Line Financial Planning, Manage Risk and Fund the Good Life Your Whole Life, available at Amazon.com. If you don't have this year's edition, let us know and we'll send it to you. But for current rules and laws, especially tax rules, don't depend on any book or even the internet unless the information includes a date stamp. Otherwise, Talk to a professional for current tax laws and tax rules. But this book is a good source for general planning information and ideas. So here's the 10-part checklist. Retirement itself, the budget, income sources, assets to supplement the income, risk management, tax and estate planning, and legacy planning. And then run the numbers, adjust the plan, and repeat. So uh, we're going to talk about each of these a little bit. So jump in if you have any questions or comments if you're watching the uh, live version of this. You can't do financial planning for retirement until you know what your own retirement actually looks like. Maybe you're as ambitious as this couple, maybe not. So when will you retire? How will you spend your time? And how will you spend your money? And how might this change over the course of a 20 to 30 year retirement? Something we talk about with clients a lot beyond the financial planning aspects is that uh, you have to plan not to get bored in retirement. It's not like a two-week vacation that just keeps going. It, it'll feel like that for a while, but at some point, you have to find something to occupy the time. For a lot of people, that's especially true around 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Monday through Friday because Face it, daytime TV and naps just don't cut it for most people after a while. The nap is fine. Keep that. Uh, but some people volunteer or they plan home projects or babysit the grandkids. It's usually a whole bunch of things. But the key is they have something to look forward to, things that make them feel productive, get them off the couch. Um, it's good for your physical health to get off the couch, and it's good for your mental and emotional health uh, to get out of the house. Uh, a little bit too. Uh, for spouses, that can mean doing things together, but also maybe having some separate in interests as well. You know, get a break from each other occasionally. It makes the heart grow fonder, right? Other things to talk about, um, how will you want to share your time and or your wealth with others? Do you expect to live a longer or shorter lifespan than average because of family history or health? 
Um, if you think you will want to relocate at some point, what will be the difference in the cost of living in that other area? How will your activities change there and how might that affect your budget? I list some common retirement activities in the book and if you Google things to do in retirement, you'll get lots of ideas. A lot of our retired clients say they're so busy, they don't know how they got everything done when they were working. Just try to make that a good busy as much as you can. So this is about picturing your day-to-day -day life. You won't get this exactly right. Things change, but you can't really do the next step until you at least sketch an outline of what retirement looks like for you. So take some notes on that and you'll need them uh, for the next item, your retirement budget. It may help to think of this in three buckets. Category one is the basics. I uh, added a thorough budget list in the appendix of the book and I organized it by things you pay for monthly, things you pay for quarterly or annually, like some insurance policies and things you pay for as you go, like new furniture or home and car maintenance items. Uh, we, we almost always break out car purchases as a separate item when we run a retirement analysis. You know, how often do you buy a new car? How much do you spend after trade-in on each one? Because, I mean, that's a big hit to a budget. Uh, and don't forget about home maintenance. You'll need a new roof once in a great while, new furnace and air conditioner. Those are expensive items you could account for separately in a retirement analysis. And you should also have a certain amount of money in your yearly budget to cover smaller maintenance and repair items around the house and the cars, pets, and so on. Category two is your lifestyle items like travel, gifts for family that happen throughout the year, uh, toys and hobbies, you know, motorcycles, dance classes, discretionary items that will make retirement enjoyable, but things that could be adjusted if absolutely necessary. And in some cases, especially with travel, you may spend a lot more in the early years um, than later on when you get into your mid to late 80s. That's not always the case, but uh, sometimes it's a, it's a lever you can pull if you need to on the planning. We put car purchases under basics but if you have other big ticket items like a home remodel or maybe a lake cabin or a boat or an airplane, and uh, certainly if you plan to relocate, you have to plan way ahead for those to make sure you have the assets to cover it when, when the time comes. There's the third category, your dreams, things you'd really like uh, but aren't sure if you're going to be able to afford. When we run a retirement analysis, we always include those in the first draft. If it works, it works. Hey, look, we made all your dreams come true. Uh, or really you did, and we just proved it. If it doesn't work, we make suggestions. Uh, if it's long enough until retirement, maybe there's still time to start a savings account on the side to try to get to those dreams, or at least one or two of them. Relocation may fall into this category, but if you plan far enough ahead and it, and it really is a dream, it may be worth it uh, to work toward that. In the book, we have a whole chapter on income and accumulation planning that talks about how to work toward big ticket items. Uh, that includes retirement savings uh, and uh, can also include big items like relocation, big dream purchases like boats or RVs or a seasonal condo or cabin and, and so on. Also, think about how your expense picture may change as you get older. Maybe you spend less on travel in later years, maybe more on health care, though, or long-term care. Uh, next, we're going to talk about how, to, how we pay for everything. So checklist item number three is that where your income comes from. We start with income that's fixed. In other words, steady and reliable. And uh, that can include Social Security. And we can help you figure out the timing when you start Social Security. For some people, this is very critical. It can make the difference in running out of money or not. And we can help you figure that out. Uh, pension, income, which for most couples is set up to go for the lifetime of both of you. But we, we occasionally see cases where the person who selected the pension option chose single lifetime income to get a little more each month. Now, that can have a pretty dramatic effect on the long-term picture, especially when we look at bad case scenarios such as a spouse dying prematurely. 
you have to plan for those contingencies, and we'll talk a little more about that later. If you or somebody you know needs advice on which pension option to pick, uh, we can help with that too, and uh, you know maybe avoid an argument down the road too. If you have an annuity with guaranteed income, that's another fixed source of income. Now, Social Security includes cost of living increases as inflation chips away at your buying power. Some annuities also have inflation riders on the income, uh, but most pensions don't. Some do. This is another reason it's really hard to crunch the long-term numbers with a calculator and a pencil. Our planning software lets us enter cost of living growth rates for each separate income source, so you can have a, a different uh, rate on each source if needed. Uh, then there's fixed income that doesn't last a lifetime. This could be uh, rental income or some annuities, riders, and some pensions. Um, some of those only go a certain number of years, or maybe you loan one of your kids a big ch chunk of money they're paying back over time. That would be a non-lifetime fixed uh, source of income as well, anything like that. Finally, there's variable income, which changes over time and may or may not last a lifetime. And this could be investment income, which may or may not vary. If it's correctly invested and you're disciplined, it could be the same amount every month for life. Or you can even plan to take more over time to account for inflation. But again, you have to be very disciplined and probably need to work with a financial professional to try to make sure you're not overdrawing the accounts and putting yourself in danger of running out. And by overdrawing, I mean taking too much. This is why it's better to oversave a little uh, when you're saving for retirement. So you don't have to take an unreasonable amount each month or as, as a percentage of your uh, assets in retirement to supplement your other income sources. It's a tightrope we help clients navigate all the time. Uh, trust income can fall into this same category or again if it's managed correctly it could be moved into the lifetime fixed income category. A lot of people bristle at the idea of working during retirement. That's not really retirement, right? Uh, but it actually is very common for retirees at some point uh, to turn a hobby into some income or, uh, or to get a job for the social interaction or to feel productive. And some have to go back to work if they didn't plan well enough or if uncontrollable circumstances force them to have to increase their household income. So once you get a handle on your income sources, you need to also have a strategy for your assets that you'll use to supplement that income. About 21% of married couples live on Social Security alone in retirement, and about 45% of, of unmarried people. Now that's a pretty slim living, as Social Security typically only covers 40 to 50% of pre-retirement income. So most of us need to add to Social Security. That can be bank accounts, uh, but this isn't about your emergency fund. Your emergency fund in the bank isn't for retirement spending. It's for emergencies. This is about savings accounts, CDs, products that are stable, not a lot of growth when interest rates are low. Uh, some people have enough bank money that they need very little or no growth at all in order to supplement their income enough to make it through a comfortable retirement. But even those folks typically aren't happy with the low growth of a bank account. Yeah, it's safe and stable and you can get to the money easily, uh, but most people we talk to are willing to accept some trade-offs on the stability and the liquidity one or the other, to get a little more growth on at least some of their money. And a lot of people need more growth just to get through retirement. So that could mean, obviously, investments. And that's a whole webinar unto itself. A ton of options from the stock and bond markets to conservative options, alternative investments. But the key is to understand your investments by working with a professional. Know what you might be able to expect for each account in terms of growth and, and risk, which may mean possibly significant risk of loss, or risk may mean just a certain amount of volatility, ups and downs over time, 
Um, there are ways to manage through those volatile times, especially with our recession reserve method, and that can help you sleep better at night. Or you may not want any stock market exposure at all. You may prefer annuity products, and there are several of those. Some can give you conservative growth potential without direct exposure to the stock market at all. Uh, some are a, are a fixed rate. Some are actually in the stock market. If you have an annuity and you're not sure how it works, uh, we talk about them all the time and can give you a second opinion on, on whatever you have. Periodically, uh, revisit the costs and performance of your investments. And those two factors are often closely related. Uh, the lower the fees in an investment, including hidden trading fees, the better your performance might be, which can be an important factor in fulfilling your plans for retirement. Take a look at the investing chapter of our book to learn about efficient investing. You have to assume, uh, assume a certain rate of growth on your investments in a retirement analysis, and we generally try to shoot a little low on that in case markets don't cooperate. Over the real long run, markets do well, but the shorter the timeline until you need the money, the less you want to depend on a certain growth rate in the stock market, unless you have, uh, you know, if you have fixed rate products in your portfolio, those you can uh, depend on more. Again, with our recession reserve method, we can help you uh, plan the short, mid, and long-term picture. Real estate is also a way to supplement your retirement, maybe rental properties, uh, but eventually every landlord wants out or maybe they want to hand it off to their adult kids, or, or maybe you have some land you can sell at some point to add to the kitty. But regardless of how you're invested in real estate, you'll want to plan way ahead if it's going to supplement your retirement income. Plan on it taking a while to sell real estate, for example. It may not actually take too long, but better to get way ahead of that just in case. Collectibles may be another way to supplement your income. You know, sell some antiques or art. Uh, or the comic book collection, the Star Wars figures, the Elvis doll, the Elvis clock my grandmother gave me. Uh, it turned out that wasn't worth a lot, but it, you know, uh, it was pretty cool and it made me think of grandma. Values of uh, collectibles can swing wildly up and down, so it's, it's hard to depend on it as a source of retirement income. But uh, maybe you have a warehouse full of muscle cars from the 60s and 70s. Something like that could dramatically improve your retirement picture, whether you drive them or sell them, right? Uh, so finally, we do sometimes include an anticipated inheritance in a retirement plan, uh, but, but that's a wild card, and usually it's best not to count on that, and a lot of people don't even like to think about it to begin with. Some don't mind thinking, thinking about it, and for some people, it's, it's an important factor. All right, checklist item number five, risk management. You can't eliminate risk, but you can manage it. You do that every day when you look both ways before crossing the street or check the air in your tires. Uh, those are free. Number one is your emergency fund. We're big fans of having enough emergency money in the bank, but how much is enough? Uh, we talk about that uh, with new clients a lot, lots of ways to look at it. It really comes down to what helps you sleep at night. Just make sure you've thought it through. Health insurance. Now, don't leave home without it. Don't stay home without it. And any insurance uh, of any kind really is, essentially involves handing off some of the risk from yourself to an insurance company. Worth every penny if you use it. And if you don't use it, well, you insure your house, and it, if it doesn't burn down, are you mad because you wasted money on insurance? No. The risk is worth the expense of the insurance. Be sure to watch for age 65 Medicare enrollment deadlines and get professional assistance shopping for Medicare supplements, which you can get for free, by the way. We can refer you to someone for that. And shop it again yearly in case there are changes. Life insurance is something we offer clients, but I always say if you don't need life insurance, you don't need it, so don't get it. If you do need life insurance, you really need it, so absolutely get it. We can help you think through the many purposes of life insurance 
the family protection, business protection, and so on. Some types of policies build cash value you can use to supplement retirement income if you start on it early. And if you need more life insurance and you think it's going to be more expensive the older you get, you're right. Especially between age, uh, age 60 to 70, the price ramps up pretty dramatically, but it, it may still be worth it. Be sure to include insurance premiums in your budget and, you know, let us do a life insurance review for you if you're not 100% sure if you have enough or wonder if you have too much life insurance. If you're thinking about dropping it, you know, talk to us and we'll, uh, we'll help you think through it. Disability insurance. It's for people who are still working and disability is a lot more common than death. So if you have a you know, ways to go in your career and you haven't looked at uh, disability insurance, you should at least uh, take a look. We don't deal with it, but we can refer you to a professional who does. Property and casualty insurance. If you own a home, you probably have it. Good. Get a quote now and then. Uh, Long-term care insurance. Some people call it nursing home insurance. For a while, a number of years ago, it was mispriced. It was a mess. Now it's a more stable product, and we're big fans of at least taking a look, understanding how it works. Some policies are designed to protect your assets from the Medicaid spend-down rule, uh, in addition to covering nursing home care and other in-home care, um, assisted living, and everything in between. But, uh, you know, all these are all alternatives that may keep you out of a nursing home longer, which is good for you and good for the insurance company. If you have the sweetheart plan where you're going to care for each other as a couple, think about how it's going to work in your 80s. If one of you has trouble getting out of a chair, how many times a day will the other one be hoisting you out of that chair? Well, their back hold up. And if you think long-term care insurance is too expensive, find out for sure you may be wrong. Some people are able to afford a decent policy into their late 60s or even early 70s. So if in doubt, talk to a professional. Again, we don't offer this, but we can refer you to someone who can explain how it works and get you a quote. Finally, on risk management, identity theft and scams. This isn't, isn't an insurance product, although there are some things like that. I don't know a lot about them and I can't recommend one, but this is more about taking just sensible precautions. Uh, the book goes into some detail about this, but there's lots of information online. Protect your personal information, account numbers, social security numbers. Uh, don't click on email links from people you don't know. Don't let someone in your house if you're not 100% sure who they are. Don't cash a check for a Nigerian prince. The Nigerian prince thing is an old one. They're, they're more sophisticated now. It's something you have to take it upon yourself uh, to keep up on, but very important to protect yourself. Okay. Next uh, checklist item, number six, is uh, tax and estate planning. We're not accountants or attorneys, so we can't give any specific tax or legal advice. We can refer you to professionals if needed, uh, but we do talk a lot with clients about general tax and estate planning concepts. For example, we use different funds for uh, IRA investment accounts than we use for non-IRA accounts called non-qualified accounts. Some types of invest investment funds generate less taxes than others, and we can explain how that works anytime you want to talk about it. We also can help you decide where to draw money from if you have both IRAs and non-IRA accounts. The general concept is you want to leave tax deferred money alone as long as possible in most cases. So if you have a non-IRA account, you'll only pay the lower tax rate on the growth and you so you want to draw from it before you draw from your IRA because you'll owe the higher ordinary income tax rate on every dollar you take out not just on the growth. Withdrawals from a Roth IRA are totally tax free so now you've got three possible choices for where to get cash. Work with a tax professional on your yearly withdrawals to balance capital gains tax against ordinary income tax and get their advice on when to use tax-free Roth IRA withdrawals to manage your taxes. If you're confused, don't worry. We can take the time to help you understand it. It's a whole conversation, uh, but you'll get it. But I want to repeat one more time, tax laws change all the time. So anything I'm saying about, for example, the difference between capital gains and ordinary income tax here, 
that could change any time. So make sure you're getting up-to-date information uh, from a professional. Now for your critical estate planning and legal documents, like your will and your trust, your durable power of attorney. For those, you have to talk to a, to a lawyer. Everyone should have a will and a durable power of attorney, uh, which just assigns someone who can handle your finances if you get incapacitated without having to get a court order. So it's very important. And if you don't have one, get one as soon as you can. Not everyone needs a trust, but if you need one, there's nothing else like it. If in doubt, talk to an attorney. Uh, be sure to keep your legal documents updated. Look at your will and your trust and your other documents every year or two. Get with your attorney if you need to make adjustments. Also, make sure that you keep your beneficiaries updated on all your accounts. The home, the car, house, bank accounts, investments, everything. By the way, if you have a beneficiary on an account, it avoids probate for your heirs. A will does not avoid probate. A trust does avoid probate, uh, but if you don't need a trust otherwise, don't get a trust just to avoid probate for your heirs. Uh, just make sure there are beneficiaries and uh, that does ab avoid probate. Get beneficiaries on your bank accounts, investment accounts, anything with an account number, and anything with a title like cars and boats, and anything with a deed like your house. The real estate beneficiary is not as easy as the other ones. Uh, you should get with a title company for that, or if you're already seeing an attorney about your will or other legal documents, they can do the beneficiary on real estate as well. But if that's all you need, it may be less expensive just to use a title company. Finally, Asset tiling. This is interesting. We see a lot of investment account statements from other advisors uh, where there's a joint account and it's titled Joint Tenants with Rights of Survivorship. Now that used to be the only option. Now for married couples in most states, including Missouri, there's another alternative that will give you some protection in case of a lawsuit. And I won't get into it here. It's called tenants in the entirety or tenants by the entirety. For now, I'll just say check your joint investment accounts and bank accounts. If it says joint tenants with rights of survivorship, get it changed to tenants in the entirety. Call me if you need an explanation, but trust me, there's no reason not to do it. It's some extra protection for your assets. There are other tax and legal concepts scattered throughout the book. And in the tax planning chapter, I include an index listing of, of all those other tax references in the book. So you can easily find them. Tax rules change all the time. This is maybe the hardest thing for a retiree to keep up on. So just make sure you have an accountant who will take the time, you know, to talk to you about those changes and help you keep more of what's yours. Okay. Next is, uh, Planning item number seven, legacy planning. Now, this can be a lot of things, but commonly it's about leaving money or other assets to heirs, uh, paying for kids or grandkids' education, leaving money to your church or favorite nonprofit, starting an endowment, and so on, uh, making a lasting difference in the world. As I say in the book, if this is important to you, make it part of the plan. Just like estate planning and taxes overlap, Legacy planning and taxes can overlap too. The IRS uh, allows you to entirely avoid tax on some or all of your required minimum distributions each year by transferring money to directly to uh, from your IRA to an IRS qualified charity and or religious organization up to a certain limit. This is the Qualified Charitable Distribution or QCD. You don't pay tax on the gift and neither does the organization you're sending it to. This is a great way to support your favorite nonprofits and church and save yourself some taxes, especially if you're already giving to those organizations anyway, but always check current rules and limits. Next checklist item, and it's a big one, run the numbers. We have sophisticated retirement analysis software and the result is a nice report that we go over with you and update periodically. 
This is about calculating each year's results all the way through your projected lifespan. And here's what the ledger looks like. Don't let this scare you. Most of the report is easier to look at. But this ledger page shows each year how much is coming in, um, the investment growth, taxes, spending, and how much is left uh, at the end of the year over here in the far right column. So you can see at a glance whether your portfolio will hold up. And uh, in this hypothetical example, the re results look great. You can see in the far right column that their portfolio balance is increasing, not decreasing. It's okay if it de decreases over time, uh, some, somewhat, as long as there's still plenty left at age 95 or 100. Otherwise, we have to get to work on solutions. There are lots of reasons it's hard to, retire, uh, to run a retirement analysis yourself. For example, inflation. Uh, inflation can be done on a spreadsheet, but it's hard to use a different rate of inflation on healthcare than on basics, for example. And also, our software that we use you know, knows where to make withdrawals first for tax management purposes from your various accounts. And if your income sources vary over time, including cost of living adjustments on Social Security, that's hard to calculate over time as well. It can be done, uh, but once you set all that up, it may be quicker and and uh, much easier just to let a professional financial planner do it in their planning software for you, which again, uh, we're happy to help you with. We believe it's critical that you also evaluate your results by running bad case scenarios. Here's what I mean. Um, it's important for contingency planning and to expose and address potential areas of risk you may not have considered. It can be emotionally challenged, uh, challenging to push these fear buttons, but ironically, it may also help you be a little better emotionally prepared for life's curveballs if they actually happen. Here's one we do on almost every retirement analysis. Spouse number one dies prematurely. That's hard to talk about sometimes. And it's hard to even consider. Uh, but if you're doing retirement planning, you have to go there. It affects income, spending, lifestyle, of course, legacy planning, taxes, everything. So you have to look at this. And then, of course, we have to flip it and see how it works out if spouse number two dies prematurely instead. Usually it's a completely different financial picture. You got to do it. Uh, some other ones you may want to include, depending on your situation. One or both spouses live much longer than expected. Health expenses are higher than expected. Um, disaster scenarios, maybe you want to include. Mom or dad moves in, or you have to help them financially. Um, if you're already thinking about possible things that could affect your budget, get creative. Imagine the best and the worst. It's, it's about stress testing the plan. All good plans have to at least try to anticipate big events that could throw the plan off track. Once you run the numbers and then throw everything in the kitchen sink at it to see if it holds up, how much is left over at the end of your plan projection under normal and bad case scenarios? If there's a lot left over, maybe you'll want to revisit your legacy planning or your lifestyle objectives or, or move those dreams into the wants column. Or maybe you can afford less volatility with your investments and you know therefore less potential return as well. And if you worry a lot about the markets, then maybe you can dial that down a little and still come out great in the end. So are there years where uh, your projected resources don't meet your needs? This is where you have to get creative for step number nine and adjust the plan. Uh, but there are really only five levers you can pull. Number one, you can save more ahead of retirement spend less during retirement, earn more during retirement, uh, maybe make uh, the long-term investment bucket a little more aggressive. That's one way to earn more. Although that will likely mean more volatility too. So, that, so that's a tough trade-off for a lot of people. Sometimes it can make sense. Depends on the client. Our recession reserve approach 
may help you manage your emotional risk tolerance against the historical realities of the of the stock and bond markets if you do need to seek more investment growth potential. Uh, another way to earn more, of course, again, nobody likes to think about working in retirement. That's an oxymoron, right? But if your plan doesn't work, maybe you start thinking about turning a hobby into an income source. You can adjust the timing of income generating, uh, income generating activities. For example, sell some real estate sooner than planned or turn on the annuity income rider a year or two sooner or keep the rental property going a little longer than you originally planned. Finally, you can adjust the timing and or the frequency of your spending during retirement or the amount. Uh, for example, replace the car every eight years instead of every five years. Maybe delay the car replacement if you project a new roof on your home will be needed the same year. Sometimes a small adjustment to several of these can get you on track. Every case is different. So the final item in the ultimate retirement checklist. Here it is. Repeat on a regular basis, even during retirement. Start back at step one. Make sure the plan still makes sense. Do this as far in advance as possible before retirement. And then again, uh, periodically, both before and during retirement. So are the projections you came up with before retirement holding up? If you're getting ahead or behind, make adjustments and then rerun the numbers. Okay, that, that's a lot of information. If you were expecting a 10 item checklist, you got it. If you were expecting it to be real simple, as you can see, there are checklists within the checklist. Retirement planning is complicated whether you're young or already well into retirement. Get help from a professional and we, again, we hope it's us. Now, here's a bonus checklist item. Have fun. And remember, taking it easy is an important part of having fun. So, uh, and then making the most of life. Somebody told me once, the secret to happiness is to figure out what you enjoy doing and do more of that. I'll add, spend time with the people you love. And remember, as we always say, it's your future. You earned it. Plan it and then enjoy it. Here's our number and our location and our wonderful team. Call if we can help anytime. Thanks for watching.